Hello everybody and welcome to the Matrix Fitness Workout. I'm so glad that you could join me today. Today's Matrix Fitness Workout is going to be about conditioning work. What we're going to do is we're going to take you through a whole variety of different exercises. There's going to be three rounds to each one. Okay? And what we're going to do in each round is we'll do the exercises twice. That way then you can learn them, practice them, and then you can join me in trying to do every single repetition and challenging your own personal fitness as well. You're going to need a little bit of space, so you can see I've got a mat to the side which I'm going to be using, um, and we could have that used in the end of our first round. We've also got the option of using that in our second round, so I just make it sound a little bit more comfortable on the floor. What we're also going to do is take you for a warm up and a cool down either side of this workout so we can prepare you for your workout and we can also help you recover so that way that you feel comfortable as well. Now it's a bit cold outside today, so I've got my, uh, my warm leggings on just to keep me warm, but hopefully you've got the heating set up at the appropriate temperature for you. So that way then you don't mind if I take you through a few options where I'm going to try and push your fitness a little bit more as well. So let's begin with just opening up the arms a little bit more. So just starting to reach in a diagonal movement from one side to the other. And we're just going to start to stretch the arms because we've got a few upper body exercises coming up later on. I just want to make sure that every single part of your body is ready for your own challenging workout. Whatever level of fitness you are, I'll take you through different options that we can get you prepared for this as well. Okay, now what I'm going to do is get you to reach up high and just lean from one side and back to the centre and just pause for a second before you lean over towards the opposite side. What we're looking to do here is just to get your body moving, just to get your body aware that we're going to put it through a little bit of work and then we can start to challenge the range of movement that we're creating at the moment and build a little bit more strength around those muscles as well. Just shake them out there a little bit. Now let's just have a little rotation from side to side. So just bring your hands to the front of your chest and just rotate around, and you can just see I'm just starting to come up onto my forefoot, which just allows me to get a bit of mobility in my ankles, my hips, and also as I start to rotate my arms around, if I start to push the elbows a little bit further now, I can still just feel a little bit more movement in my higher part of my spine as well. This just feels great, just to help loosen up. There's a lot of sitting down at the moment, so just to make sure that we're moving well, and moving with purpose, and then we can really start to become strong through today's workout as well. Okay, well like I said, what I'm going to do is I'll actually take a half a squat. Now for here, we're going to have your feet shoulder width apart, and I just want you to lower your hips down a little bit towards your heels, and I just want to draw some blood and some awareness to the thighs. So when you're doing this squat, I just want you to almost feel like your muscles are working a little bit, and then bring yourself out to there as well. Now you can see I'm just using my arms, just as a little bit of a counterbalance, so that way then I can start to push my hips backwards, and my arms coming forwards just allow me to keep a nice balanced position. And this means that the weight is going to be equal all the way through your feet rather than you just coming up onto your tiptoes or leaning back in your heels. You want your weight to feel like it's pressed down into the floor and you can push off the floor to bring you back up again. Good, shake it out here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to jab, cross, jab, and then I'm going to get you to jump all the way around. Here we go again, jab, cross, jab, all the way through, jab, cross, jab. Now when we're throwing these punches, I want them to be a little bit more dynamic. Good, there we go. Now just start to throw around about head height. Start to think about throwing those punches, whether it's to me, whether it's to somebody else, but throw those punches with a little bit of purpose. Now the whole idea behind throwing these punches now is that we can start to really start to wake up through the arms and start to activate through the chest, the back muscles, and the shoulders as well. Let's do the last couple each side, a little bit stronger. A little bit quicker so you can start to get your body prepared. Good, shake it all out for me. Now I want you to imagine you've got a skipping rope, because we know that boxers love skipping. So you've got your magic skipping rope, put it into your hands, and then just get yourself moving on the spot. It's time to get your heart rates up a little bit more. We've mobilised the body, we've activated some of the muscles, now we want to get your heart rate up a little bit higher, so we can really push you during our workout if you feel like you're ready for it. Now check this out, we can just start to move your feet forwards and backwards into like a scissor action. Now the nice thing about this is you're going to be pushing off the floor, which means that when we start to come with an option of pushing you off the floor in our main part of the exercises, you'll be ready for a little bit of jumping work. It's optional, and throughout the workout I'm going to give you options all the time to make the exercises easier or harder as well. Now just have a go at taking those feet wide and narrow. You can still jump the rope, and the nice thing about this one is you're starting to work the muscles on the inside and the outside of the legs. Good work, okay. Now take a knee strike across your body. 
We're going to do three sides. Take it over to the opposite side. So take that knee strike from one side over to the other. Take it again. Knee strike across your body. Good. And again. Now you're trying to drive your hands and your knees together in order to create this big range of movement. Good. Last one's here. Great work. Let's take you straight into your first exercise. What you're going to do is require a little bit of space. You're going to shuffle across, reach across your body, come back to the center, and then over to the opposite side. Reach across your body, and then come back. So think about doing a little bit of a squat towards the end. And just push yourself across your body a little bit further. Good, keep this going for me. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take you into a lunge position. So just pause it there. Now check this out. I'm going to turn sideways so you can see. You're going to place one knee on the floor. And what I want you to do is I just want you to lunge up and down on the spot here. Now when you're doing this one, think about your weight equal between both feet. I want your spine nice and straight, and I want your weight distributed nice and evenly through both legs here as well. Now we're just going to do a few more on this one leg, and then we're going to swap over to the opposite side. Let's go, change those legs over, and straight into that movement. Think about lowering your back knee down towards the floor, and looking straight ahead. Now that might be you looking at the screen, it might be you checking out something, maybe it's a mirror that you've got in your living room, or if you're in your bedrooms, just catch your eyes on something, just make sure your form is good. Okay, let's take it down to the floor for our third exercise. We're going to take a presser, and I'm going to start off doing the presser on my knees. You can use that if you'd like to. You're going to do a presser, and then you're going to come into this big T position, and then we'll alternate from side to side. Okay, let's do it together. Down towards the floor, push yourself up, rotate up into that T position, come back into the center, lower your chest to the floor, and then over to the opposite side. And one of the things you'll notice is I'm always coming up onto my toes when I come into that T position, which does mean that you're going to need to shuffle your feet a little bit. It's completely normal that your feet are just going to start to move as you start to transition from your knees to your feet. So just get used to the fact that you're going to just need to adjust your feet just to make sure that your hands are underneath your arms, underneath your shoulders as you lower yourself down to that strong press-up position, bring yourself back up again. Good, relax well, there. So that is the first round of exercises. Now that you've learned them, let's bring them all together so we can start to challenge you a little bit more. We've got the lateral shuffle to the side with a little bit of a squat finish. Starting in three, two, one. Let's go shuffle. Reach across your body into a deep squat. Shuffle across, and then reach it down below the body. Now I'm reaching around about ankle height, but you've got the option of reaching down, and you can either touch the floor, or if your mobility isn't the best thing about your fitness, then what you can start to do is to reach around about knee height. But hopefully what we can start to do is to develop that mobility together today by reaching down a little bit lower each time you go into that movement. Now I'm starting to push off those feet a little bit quicker. Now I've got 10 seconds left on my timer, and I want you to push yourself a little bit quicker now. So can you put a little bit more energy in, and just start to travel that little bit quicker across your screen? Okay, relax there, great job there, that's very really nice. Now what we're gonna do is take you down into that lunge position. 20 seconds lunging on the spot, and then we'll swap the legs over. In three, two, one, let's go, bring yourself up, now, as you lower yourself down, you're trying to maintain this really tall posture, and that way then you can start to think about making the muscles work hard. So try not to just to move in and out of the position. I want you to think about sitting those legs tight together. I want you to think about squeezing your butt cheeks tight, especially as you start to extend up into that top position. Do so one more and then we'll swap the legs, good. You should start to feel just a little bit of discomfort in the muscles because they're working hard. You can see okay, I'm using my arms just to help keep my counterbalance weight. Because I'm moving up and down, I want my arms to move just so that way then, if at any time I start to lose my balance, I can put my arms out in different positions just to help maintain that bit of stability. Okay, good work, let's take you down to the floor. We'll get the mat out for this one because we're gonna be moving into our second round of exercises where we're gonna need the mat as well. Now in this option, I'm gonna do all the press ups on my toes and I invite you to come join with the challenge on that as well. So let's go down, press up, pivot the feet, reach up into that big T position, hand back underneath you, deep press up again, 
and then over to the opposite side. Now remember when you're doing the press up, try and get your hips and chest all the way down to the floor so it's not just your head lowering, it's the whole body. And that's what makes the press up a really great exercise. But remember, you could be doing these press ups on the knees. Let me show you what that looks like again. Lower down towards the floor, push yourself away, and you still come up onto your tiptoes to do the rotation and then come back to the center again. Here's what it looks like on the knees. Bring yourself up to the top. Let's do the last one on the toes together. We scroll, push off the floor, up into that T position, and you are there. Great job in round one. Now, round two, we're going to be focused on working on the mat in this one. So let's lie down on your backs. Let's put one leg underneath the knee, one leg lifted up, and lift up through the hips. So I want you to push through your hands and through the foot and lift the heel up towards the ceiling. Now, when you're doing this exercise, think about trying to extend through the hip. Now, the goal here is a full extension of the hip so that you start to work your butt cheek muscles. Let's do one more, then we'll swap the legs over. Good, okay, quick transition, swap the legs, push through the hip. Your whole goal is to give you a better looking butt, a more athletic looking butt, a stronger butt. And each time you push and fully extend that hip, that's where the benefits you're going to be coming from this one. So really try and do a good job, getting as much height in the foot as possible, and relax there. Let's see you up. Your next exercise is a core exercise, and this one is going to be working through the abdominal muscles. So what we're going to do, sit nice and tall with your arms out in front of you. I want you to really create a nice tall spine. From here, lean back until you find a little bit of shaking. Once you've got that shaking, we're going to rotate around from side to side. Now that rotation is going to come from your upper spine. So remember the mobility work that we did earlier in the warm-up? That mobilized this area, so hopefully we can now start to feel that you can work the muscles that you first warmed up. Now, have you still got that little bit of shaking in your stomach? I'm going to call that the tremor of truth. Now, if your muscles are shaking it just a little bit, that means they're under a little bit of work, and that's great. We want you to feel the work on this one. There's no point just sat there, moving side to side, in the middle of a workout, if you're not getting the benefits from it, relax there for me, team. Okay, what we're going to do now is a mountain climb. This is our third exercise of our second round. Mountain climb is going to be hands underneath the shoulders, a bit like our press-up position that we did already. So bring yourself up onto the toes this time, and walk your knees in and under the chest. Now, I don't need you to run. I just need a nice, slow climb. When you get called a mountain climber, as an exercise, you've got to make sure now, what would it feel like if you were climbing up a mountain? You've got to make sure that the legs take a large range of movement. Now, when you're doing this exercise, be mindful about squeezing your shoulder blades together. We want that. We want to make sure you're in a really strong top of the press up position. And if you find press ups difficult, this is a really good position to get your body used to and get it used to working hard in this position. Imagine a line between your fingertips. Or maybe look at the top of your mat. That's a really good place to keep your eye on. Okay, relax there. Let's take you onto your backs again. Let's do all three of those exercises again and challenge your difficulty a little bit more if possible. So this time, we're going to push those hips and ensure that they're always going to be fully extended. One leg goes up, the legs push through. Now you have an option of the hands being on the floor, but if you were to bring your arms and point them up into the air, what you now have is less stability on the floor, which means that you might feel that you move a little bit side to side, because the only thing that's in contact now with the floor is going to be your head and your shoulder blades. Let's do one more and swap the legs over. Same thing again, push the hips up high, fully extending through the hip, and those arms being taken off the floor just challenge the stability. If that's too much instability for you, you are more than welcome to bring your hands down. That just gives you a little bit more support. It means that you can press your hands into the floor. So you can play with that and see what's right for your level of ability. Okay, now we're going to have a look at that Russian twist. It's funny how so many exercises get these names in different countries. So what we're going to do is sit nice and tall, extend the arms out, lower yourself back until we find that little tremor of truth that we talked about in the first round, and then a rotation from one side back to the centre, and then over to the opposite side. So that tremor of truth 
just shows that the muscles are working. And then as you start to rotate around from one side to the other, it's a really good way of engaging those muscles. This is one of the exercises that I would give people if they were looking to cut into the shape of their stomach a little bit more. Maybe they've had a little bit too much food over the Christmas period. Maybe they're wanting to cut into, get themselves ready for a wedding or a summer bikini body. These are all the sort of exercises that really give good shape to the abdominals, which is a great exercise to do. So just think about these and maybe start to really practice them, adding those into your own workouts. Let's turn them onto your front. We've got the mountain climbers. This will be the last time we do these. And then that will be the end of our round two. So placing your hands underneath your shoulders. Let's get you into that really strong press-up position that we've talked about. Eyes looking down at the imaginary line between the fingertips. Bring your shoulder blades back and down. And then take a nice, slow, steady, big climbing walk. Bringing the knees up towards the chest. And be strong as you extend the leg. And hold that really strong plank. As you're alternating the legs, it should feel like you're not shifting your weight from side to side. So making sure that the bones stay down. That's a really strong position, this one. If you feel like your arms are working, you're doing it right. If you feel like your core is braced and tense and almost feeling like you're almost restricting your breathing, well, we don't want you to restrict your breathing, but that should feel like there's a little bit of pressure around your ribs because your core is being activated so much. Good work, okay. We'll leave the mat out because we do have another exercise, but if you feel like you're going to maybe trip over it, please move it out of the way so you can get yourself ready. Now the next exercise, feet turned wide, I want you to go down into a sumo position. And then all I want you to do is bring yourself back up, and we're going to just do a three pulses down here, and then stand up nice and tall. So let's bring it down to that sumo squat, three pulses, and then bring it back up. So down to the sumo squat, one, two, three, bring yourself up standing. And you can see all I'm doing is making sure that my knees are over my ankles and over my feet, and then bring myself nice and tall. Keep looking towards the screen, so you can keep your back in a really nice straight way. I always find that people look down towards the floor, they start to bend their spine forwards a little bit. We only really want that, we want to keep your back as straight as possible. So you can imagine when the gym's reopen, and you can get back to the gym, then what you can start doing is putting a bar on your back, and you can be doing some of these squats as well. Now the next exercise is down onto the floor. So let's get you into that press up position again. But this time, instead of bending your arms, you're going to bring your hand up towards your shoulder. It's called a renegade row. Bring the hand to your shoulder, place it back down where it was, and then alternate from one side to the other. So now this exercise really encourages you to work through your arms and your back muscles. And if you were thinking about the mountain climbs that we were doing earlier, it's the same position, and you should start to feel that these core muscles that we started working are all engaged again. So really try and keep that control, keep a strong position. So each time you place your hand back down, it's a really strong position here. It can be hard to work in these positions because you're almost bracing your muscles all the time. That's the goal. We want you to work hard and relax there. Okay, bring yourself up to a standing position. Now, we talked earlier about some jumping exercises. This is one of them. Here's the options though. You can go into a step back lunge. Okay, we built this from our split squat, or you've got the option to join me for these jumping lunges where your weight is equal between both feet and the back knee is down to the floor. Okay, let's keep these going. So you've got the options. The jumping lunges. Let me just demonstrate the next option. Make it slightly easier, step back lunge, and then we alternate through those legs. Okay, so there are your options. Join me for the jumping lunges. Keeping your back nice and straight. Back knee goes down towards the floor. Equal weight in between both feet. So it's a strong movement. Now I've got 10 seconds left on the timer. Can you push your fitness a little bit more by moving a little bit quicker in these last few repetitions. Keep it strong and relax there. Okay, let's take those last three exercises and do them all again. The sumo squat pulse, feet turned out. Hands together, reaching down in the middle of the feet into a low position, bringing yourself into a little pulse, stand tall. Let's go for it. Down into that low squat, bring yourself up. Now maintaining your back position, 
and keeping control, you're doing a really good job if you're maintaining that depth. Now probably what you're going to find is after those jumping lunges, or the step back lunges, depending on which variation you took, you might find that your legs are starting to burn a little bit. It's never a bad thing to feel the workout as you're doing it, but we need to make sure that we'll have a good amount of time to stretch at the end as well. Now I'll lead you through the stretches, but I need you to stay online to do them. It can always be that little bit of time that people feel like they can get out and do the rest of their day without doing the stretches. I guarantee it won't feel so good. So stay with me for those stretches. Ready to go, bro. Down onto the full press up position. Really strong press up position. So think about your shoulder blades being back and down. Starting in five seconds. So make it a strong position. Last time of the day. Let's go for this. Lifting one hand to the shoulder. Place it back down underneath your shoulder. Alternate to the opposite side. Now, minimal shift from side to side. What that means is I don't want to see your body rocking all the way over to the side. Try and keep your chest and shoulders facing down towards the floor so you're in a really strong position. Challenge your strength for me. Now guarantee that exercises like this will make you better at planks. They'll make you better at press-ups, like your mountain climbers. It's a tough exercise, but it's worth doing. If this is really starting to get too challenging, next time think about starting on the knees and building up to those as well. You've always got the options. Okay, last exercise of today before we take through some stretches. It's the jumping lunges. Let's do this together. One foot forward, one foot back. Knee comes off the floor. I'm using my arms in an athletic way to maintain a little bit of counterbalance. So that way then, should I lose where I'm looking at, whether you're looking at the screen, a mirror, or just a picture frame in front of you, I want you to maintain your eyes on that prize. If you can take yourself into this really strong, deep position, you'll be holding a lot of stability. So you've got the option of the step back lunge or that jumping lunge. It's a big, strong position. You're almost there, little team. Just give me 10 seconds. What if we went a little bit faster for some of you? Give it a go. Push yourself down into that deep position. Don't lose the depth just because you've increased the speed. And relax. Just relax there. I'm going to take myself to the end of the mat. Just create a little bit of space if you need to. Hinging from your hips. Walking your hands forwards, keeping your legs straight. Into this walkout. Rest your knees onto the floor. Tuck your toes away. Lift your chin and chest up high and your breathing will come back to you. Have a very nice deep breaths, inhale, and exhale. Inhale, exhale. Now tuck the toes underneath, push into your hands, and come to a downward facing dog form. Now just pedal your heels. Now the benefit of this leg movement, where you're just pushing one heel down and the other, getting a nice stretch of your calves. And they've done a little bit of jumping work if you join me for those, so getting a nice stretch there is great. Now let's transfer your weight forwards off your hands, lower your hips down. Now this time I'm just keeping the knees off the floor, so you can just see they're not touching. And again, pushing back down and facing off. Now this time, my foot is going to come all the way up to my hand. So take a giant step and see how high you can get it. And if you physically need to move your foot, that's also fine as well. Now check that my back leg. I'm going to extend that back leg to get a deeper stretch. Reach my arm up high so I get a really long rotation through the body. Now bring that hand back inside, step back to that down facing dog position, and then over to your opposite side. Again, feel free to physically move that foot to a higher position. You can wiggle it forwards, and then reach your hand up high. Now extend that back leg. Try and think about pushing the heel away from the rest of the body. Good. Now that hand comes back inside. Come back to a downward facing dog. Good. And just bring yourself down onto your knees. And we're just going to turn you over into a seated position. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take a stretch from your glutes. So I'm going to place one foot over my thigh. I'm going to bend my knee. 
And I'm just going to turn my hands so I can always push my chest forward so I get a really nice deep stretch through my glutes. So I'm going to feel this on the outside of my hips. I can think about driving my chest towards my ankle just to intense that stretch a little bit further. And then release it and we'll swap it over to the opposite side. So this is a nice seated figure four stretch. What I like about this one, especially after workout, is sometimes you can do this in a standing position, but after workout, sometimes your balance is very fluid. So doing it in a seated position can be really useful as well. But of course, you've got the option, you can do it in a standing position as well. Great, okay, let's release that. Now, we're going to bring yourself up to a standing position. So roll up through your spine and just loosen your body out. Now, we aren't going to challenge your balance, so if you do want to hold on to something, whether it be a chair, maybe a sideboard, and what we're going to do is take you into a standing quad stretch. So, take a hold of one foot into the palm of your hand, bring your knees together. What I want you to do is I want you to bring your knees together. Think about pushing your foot into your hand, and then think about extending the hip. Think about the exercise we did where we did that single leg glute bridge, and we were pushing the hip forwards. That should feel the same now, and that gives you a really nice stretch through the hip flexors and through the quads. It's important to do those, especially after we did a lot of exercises where we were sat doing abdominal work as well. Let's take it over to the opposite side. Foot comes into your hand. Bring yourself up to a nice stirrup position. Slight bend in the standing foot. Push the foot into the palm of your hand. Excellent. Good, yeah, give it a little shake and release it there. My name is Matt. Thank you very much for joining us in this Matrix Fitness workout. I hope you have a great rest of the day and we look forward to maybe seeing some of you at 5 o'clock this evening where we go through this whole exercise routine again. And if not, we'll see you on Thursday at 7.45 in the morning, 12 o'clock or at 5 o'clock again. Take care everyone. Bye-bye.